What's going on everybody? Trev Wilson here. Welcome back to the Bourbon Ranch. Today we have another distillery overview. Penelope Bourbon is on the chopping block. We're going to be covering all four of their standard products that they have out right now. We're going to be talking about them, we're going to be drinking them, and we're going to answer the most important question, do they taste good? So a couple weeks back, I uh, released a video, spoiler alert, Penelope Barrel Strength was in the video, and it did really good. Thoroughly impressed me, um, I thought it was really good, so I decided to go and buy all their other products. So that's what we're going to be doing today, uh, just talking a little bit about Penelope and, and a lot of bit of drinking their whiskey. So I'm not going to bore you with the ins and outs of Penelope, uh, their backstory. Uh, go to their website, read all about it, learn everything you want to know. It's quite interesting. They're, they seem like really cool guys. Important things to note about Penelope. They are all four grain bourbons. I know we have a lot of newcomers, so if you don't know what four grain is, uh, in a traditional bourbon mash bill, it's primarily corn as the primary grain, at least 51%. Uh, primarily, the secondary grain is going to be rye. Uh, in other cases, it can be wheat. Maker's Mark, Weller, weeded bourbon. And then the tertiary grain would be malted barley. Four grain, go figure, it's all four of them. Penelope bourbon, sources from MGP, and then they blend several different mash bill barrels together to create a four grain. Also, all of them are non-chill filtered. We're talking from their standard line up to the barrel strength, all of them non-chill filtered. Huge kudos to you guys. Already, already trying to steal my heart. So the four bottles we're going to be talking about today, we have the Penelope Bourbon, the core bottle. We have Penelope Rosé Wine Cask finished. We have Penelope Barrel Strength. And then we have Penelope Bourbon Barrel Strength Toasted Series. All right, so let's answer the most important question, what you all come here to see. How do they taste? So let's go through all of them. First up, Penelope Bourbon, um, 80 proof. So this is this entry level bottle, still non-chill filtered. So I like where they're going. I like that um, they don't just reserve that for their cask strength stuff. I think a lot of bottles could benefit, especially lower proof bottles could benefit if they were non-chill filtered. So this one's very light on, on in color. I mean, it's very light. Again, it's 80 proof. Uh, if something's 40% alcohol, you just know it's kind of going to be light. I would imagine this is going to be super light. Totally geared towards people getting into bourbon, um, getting their feet wet, use it in a cocktail, sip on it, test out the waters. Uh, but I wouldn't imagine this is going to be anything too crazy. All right, so let's see how it tastes. Penelope, bourbon straight whiskey. On the note, it's very light. It's very light, and that's to be expected. I mean, it's very low proof. It's their entry, you know, offering. So I wasn't expecting, you know, something over the top, just super intense. Little bit of graininess, uh, some of that youthful notes. It's aged a minimum of 33 months. So all of them are pretty, you know, relatively low age. So it is sweet though. There is a sweetness that's coming through. Just a little bit of vanilla, like a vanilla bean sneaking through. Almost like a citrusy note too. Almost like an apple or something kind of shining through there. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, just know that this is very light, very approachable, non-challenging, just easy. And on the palate, and before I even get into the palate, the legs on this thing are incredible. Like, if you looked at the legs alone, you would not guess that this was 40%. You know why? Non-chill filter. On the palate, uh, it coats the mouth. Again, you can tell that it's non-chill filtered. I love it. It just, it amplifies your experience. Even, even if this is a basic product, it is not over the top complex. It's really, really simple. Uh, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of graininess. Overall though, very, very mild in all aspects, but very mouth coating. It feels like you're drinking something that's not 80 proof, 
and an entry-level product. So I'll keep this one simple. It's nothing to write home about. This is definitely not geared towards, you know, bourbon aficionados. This is kind of a gateway bottle into their products, into bourbon. Easy, it's very soft, it's got some sweetness on it, it's got some good notes, it's got great mouthfeel. I think this is a good showcase into the world of bourbon, a good start for the, for the distillery for sure. Again, I'm not saying you have to go and buy this right now, especially if you're a little bit seasoned of a bourbon drinker, but if you're newer into things, I would not pass this one by. Even the low proof, okay? I think this does pretty good. If you compare this to other 80 proofers, I will say this probably blows them all out of the water. Mix in some Coke, drink it neat, start the night off, warm your palate up, whatever. I'm happy. All right, moving on to the next bottle in their lineup, the Penelope Rosé Cask Finish. This one's 94 proof, so we're up in the proof a little bit. It's finished in rosé cask, hand-selected rosé wine casks from Southern Rhone. We're getting the real deal, baby. This one's aged more than 24 months and then is finished in the French Grenache rosé wine cask. So, I'll be honest, I've never seen a bourbon finished in rosé. I have a lot of finished bourbon. This is the only rosé one. No idea what to expect with that, uh, especially knowing what rosé tastes like. I feel like that's a weird combination to put bourbon in rosé barrels. Uh, I feel like maybe the flavors will clash, but who knows? I, I don't know. Let's just try it and find out. Also, the cork on this thing is a glass cork. Who does that? Fancy. All right, let's give this a try. Uh, like I said, rosé and bourbon, I don't know what's gonna happen. Whoa, <laughs> there's like a distinct strawberry note that is shining through all of this. I wouldn't smell that and be like, whoa, that's totally finished in rosé. So it is, it's reminding me of the regular bourbon that, that we just covered with a strawberry skewer right down the middle of it. It's pretty interesting, to be honest. It's not bad. Let's taste it. I'm, I'm really just focused on that strawberry now. Actually, just really curious to see how it tastes. Huh. It's a little weird. Wasn't really expecting that flavor combo that just happened. Not as prominent of a strawberry. So on the nose, it was like smelling an actual strawberry. On the palate, you're kind of getting a little more of the vanilla sweetness that I was getting on the first one, uh, but with a little bit of funkiness going on too, like I can taste the extra little fruitiness. I can't really pinpoint that it is strawberry, but there is some sort of fruitiness going on. I can tell that it's finished. Overall, not bad. Uh, it probably isn't my favorite finished thing ever. I, you know, it's unique for sure. I do like it a little more than the regular offering. I think a little bit higher of proof, kind of, you know, that just suits me a little better. The nose on this is my favorite part. I loved getting that strawberry note. Little, little weird for smelling bourbon and getting strawberries, but I like it. I think this one's definitely worth picking up. It, I mean, come on, what other rose cask finished bourbon have you tried? Try it and see for yourself. That's like really the only way to, to experience that. Um, maybe that's what they were going for, is let's do a finish that not maybe anybody else has done. That way, if you want to know what a rosé finished bourbon tastes like, you got to get theirs. Marketing. All right, let's move on to a bottle I already know I friggin' like. Penelope barrel strength. Um, this one is batch six, comes in 115.8, 57.9% alcohol. Again, non-chill filtered. Tell you what, if you haven't watched the video where this competed against a uh, rare breed Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, go check that out. This is pretty good stuff. It holds its ground, okay? It definitely holds its ground. I think the big kicker about all of these, the age. They're all relatively young. They're all from like 24 months, 33 months. They're, they're really young stuff, but they don't drink that way. That's something I remembered about this one. So let's go back to it. Let's see how it is. Super vanilla, super caramel. This is like a vanilla bomb. So different 
from even the standard offering. The 80 proofer, nothing like this. They, these are totally different to me. This one is just full body, full flavor, a little more intense. You're turning the volume knobs all the way up. There's a brightness to this, kind of reminds me of stuff like Smoke Wagon, where it's like a, like a fresh green apple, so some citrusy notes behind uh, that caramel and vanilla that I kind of fixate on because I, I just love uh, the over-the-top notes like that, but there is a little freshness to it, too. All right, let's see how it tastes. That's good. You really don't get the youthfulness on this. You're not getting a, you're not getting corn. Uh, the harsh, rough around the edges notes that you get on a lot of younger things. I will say, it's not like like an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Twelve years old. Those notes are dark. They're super dense. Tons of barrel influence on them. This isn't like that, okay? So the best way to explain it, if you've tried Smoke Wagon and you like it, I think you're gonna like uh, the Penelope. I think this is much more a testament to people who know how to blend from MGP. They're not just buying some young stuff and throwing it in a bottle and saying, here you go. They're taking barrels from them, they're blending them together, they're creating their own unique thing and you come out with a super solid product. This tastes really good. It does not taste young. It's dangerously uh, drinkable. For 115 proof, I could slam this. It's just no rough edges, no youthful harsh notes. This is just done right, and I'm thoroughly impressed with it. You guys are freaking killing it. And this is not a sponsored video either. I'm just saying that because my taste buds are happy. That one is a definite. You gotta try it. All right, moving on, last bottle. Penelope Barrel Strength. This is the Toasted Series. This is their way of doing picks. Okay, you're not picking a single barrel. You are basically picking uh, the ingredients for the secondary barrel. So what they do, they take their other stuff, they age it, and then they put it into a secondary barrel. That secondary barrel, the char and the toast level is selected by the store, and then there you have a customized selection. This particular one, two out of three char and medium toast. Aged 46 months, so a little bit older stuff. Also non-chill filtered. I actually like when distilleries do this, when they do different char levels, different toast levels. It's kind of like the maker's private selections where you choose the different amounts of each stave. It just creates so many more possibilities of a flavor combination. So if you want to know how other ones taste, you got to look at the back, uh, you know, just to see how a char level one versus a three you gotta find one of each. This particular one is 112 proof, 56% alcohol. Arkansas Select, let's go. Ooh, the, ooh, like toasted marshmallow, burnt marshmallow. This one, we are turning up the density. This is much deeper flavors, much more concentrated. Um, we went from bright vanilla and caramel to now we're turning into toffee, you know, just dark, dark flavors. Getting a little more oaky, you're getting a little more barrel in there too, whereas you weren't really getting that on the other ones, now you are. Let's taste it. The best way I can explain this in layman's terms, if you like Woodford Reserve Double Oak and or you like Old Forester 1910, find one of these and give it a try. This is really good. Again, on the palate, it, it drinks much different than even the barrel strength. I eat a lot more barrel. You're getting some dark oak, some, some charred oak. The vanillas are burnt. We're talking cream brulee, toasted marshmallow. The way I like marshmallows, you dip it in the fire and let it combust. This is just a home run. This toasted series one's probably my favorite of the lot. They are really good. These guys got something going on. I've been thoroughly impressed with these guys, to be honest. They kind of just showed up out of nowhere. They're gaining traction, I feel like, and I'm really happy because they're really good. So I think you guys need to give them a try, to be honest. All right, guys, that was just a quick overview 
of Penelope bourbons. All I can say about them is just thumbs ups. I like even from the standard 80 proofer all the way up to the toasted series. I think what they have going on is really good. They're doing really good things. They're blending really good bourbon. It seems like they truly care about putting out good products. And it, it shows. When they take care of their entry-level bottle, they're non-chill filtering it, they're, you know, they give a crap. It shows. You can see it. You can taste it. I like it. I like what they're doing. Uh, they're all relatively uh, good priced, especially for a smaller company. The price is fair. I'm liking it. So, if you guys can find these, seriously, give them a shot. They taste really good. I've been thoroughly impressed with them. So, there we have it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down below if you've tried any of these bourbons and what you think about them. Any questions, leave them below. I'll get back to you. Until next time, guys, I'm Trev Wilson. I'll see you in the next video.